Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We do want to say welcome and greetings on this Monday out there, Radio Land. We want to just take a quick uh, opportunity in a moment to say happy, 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 happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful mothers who are tuned in, who are listening to me, to all the wonderful mothers who sacrifice and make it possible each and every day. We want to say God bless you and let you know that we love you and may God continue to just allow heaven to smile upon you. We we thank God for each and every one of you. We want you to know that you are appreciated. Uh, it's Monday, ladies and gentlemen, down here in the seven cities, and I've come travel all the way from Richmond, Virginia, not knowing who's going to be listening. This isn't our normal day as always, but we've been on Mondays for a, few, a little while now, uh, just walking by faith. And we want to see who's out there listening. So please, if you're in your cars, wherever you are, I want to talk and touch bases with some of you who are here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I want to just touch bases with some of you who out there and say to you who are listening that we had a wonderful, wonderful time last Thursday night. And I want to thank God for all those out there in Radio Land that showed up on last Thursday night. We had a class you will never, ever forget. Well, at least I won't. God showed up mighty through information and knowledge. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited, excited, excited about it. I'm hoping to get some folks who were able to listen, who may be tuned in on Monday. I know a lot of you, uh, most of our folks tuned in on Friday, but to those who may be tuned in today and can tell folks if it's worth coming to that class, I want to hear from you. I'm looking to hear uh, from you and hoping that we will encourage others to come out as we continue in our teaching of salvation. Again, the, uh, let me just give you a number where you can call and check in with me. I come here to not talk to air, but to talk on air. So with that being said, call me up and talk to me at 757-357-9546. Let me give you that number again, 357-9546. Uh, and one more time, 757-357-9546. Or you can call me at 622-9546. Y'all call me up. Let me know that you're listening all over the place. Smithfield, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton, Newport News, Williamsburg. Bounder, uh, I guess uh, going all the way out to Maryland. Those who can pick us up and hear us. Thank God for each and every one of you out there in Radio Land. This is the great day the Lord has made. want to invite you out Thursday night, our third class, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank God that each class has been filled. And we're asking you all to come out. If you're out there and you're getting something out of it, we're on the topic of salvation, and it's going to blow your mind. If you were there on last Thursday or if you're interested in coming out, we're also going to give you a list, as always, of some of the topics you can expect uh, on this wonderful day, hoping to take your Bible question and comment. So get on the phone, tell somebody to tell everybody to tell anybody that your favorite pastor's favorite pastor is back on the air. Again, the number is 357 357- 9546 or 757-357-9546. Give me a ring out there in Radio Land. If you're out there and you hear me, you can check in. Those of you who are riding in your cars, we definitely want to hear from you. Well, we had an awesome time dealing with various topics. We dealt with tithing on last uh Thursday, and we begun, we, we just, I guess, ba barely began our teaching on tithing, uh, salvation, rather. And we are learning now that God has a plan of salvation. And I asked a question that has yet to be answered, and I'll leave it at that because this week we're going to talk about it. That is, is it actually the will, that, uh, will of God that every man be saved? And, and uh, amongst preachers and other, other folks, through the scriptures, we have discovered that it is, in fact, God's will that every man be saved. Well, my next question is, if it's, in fact, God's will that every man be saved, is God, will God, have every part of his will done? Will God's will be done? So with that being said, I want to say this to each and every one of you out there in Radio Land. Do we believe that God is a failure? Are we saying indirectly that God has failed and that he will not get his wishes, that he will not grant his desires, and that there's something out here God would like but cannot have. I'm going to walk you through that plan of salvation. I'm going to walk you through what it really means to be saved. We're going to continue to show you that there is no sinner's prayer. We're going to continue to show you 
ladies and gentlemen, that there is no uh, uh, steps of what must you can do to be saved. That there's only one way, and that's through what Jesus has already done for us. So with that being said, call me up, 757-357-9546. Again, 757-357-9546. Call me up. And uh, let me hear from you out there in Radio Land. Let me know that you are tuned in. So we're going to deal with salvation. and We're going to deal with uh, <clears throat> the book of Revelation. I think this is going to be interesting to all those out there in Radio Land. By the way, y'all are quiet out there. I hope that you all will respond to us. We, we come out all the way on this Monday. Not because it's a normal day. We've been increasing our time so that we can pre prepare ourselves for our Thursday night classes, hoping that you all will bring people with you and be blessed by it. So please, feel free to pick up the phone. Let me know that you're listening at 357-9546 and or 622-9546. To you that's in the car, to you that were able to attend the class, call me, give me your comments. Let me hear from you on this day. We're going to talk about the book of life. We're going to show you that in the book of Revelation that the book of life is not a book like Christianity has taught or Christendom has taught that, keep, that God keeps track of who's saved, who's not saved. We're going to talk about the bottomless pit. A lot of y'all want to know what the bottomless pit is. You think that the bottomless pit is an extension of hell, some lower compartment, some basement of hell. It is not. Ladies and gentlemen, hell doesn't have a downstairs and an upstairs. Nor is hell a place of uh, burning fire, which is going to torment people physically for the rest of eternity. Hell and the lake of fire are two different terms, two different ideas, two different principles. And in this class, you're going to learn the difference between the lake of fire and hell. You don't want to miss it. So again, let me tell you when this class will be held because I don't want you to miss out. It's free of charge. And again, as always, our third class will be held at 1590 North Military Highway, the Residence Inn. Again, that's 1590 North Military Highway, the Residence Inn. And doors open at 7. We're teaching by 730. Feel free to meet us there. We're going to talk about the bottomless pit, as we said, what it is, what it is not. We're going to show you uh, exactly what is heaven. If, you don't, if, if, if there's ever a teaching that, that's missing in the body of Christ, it's the truth about heaven. Heaven isn't a planet. It's not a rock somewhere in outer space. Heaven is not somewhere you can fly to, take on the wings of angels and go to. Heaven is a realm. Heaven is something that must come to you first before you can ever be a part of it. And we'll explain that in our class. We're going to walk you through the truths of creation. We're going to show you how the earth was actually created. We're going to show you that God did not make man and then make woman and then make each one of us thereafter. I'm going to show you that everything that was ever going to be created was created back in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, I said it today. That the truth is, there is no such thing as new creation. Physically. I'll just stop right there and dive in there for a minute. All things, all matter, simply reproduces itself. It's reproduced, it changes form, but there's nothing new under the sun. Therefore, everything that is takes on different forms, but there's no matter, no, re, uh, no new creation. That's because God stopped his creation at his appointed time. Ladies and gentlemen, if y'all out there in radio, and I hope you're listening, we're going to show you what really took place in Genesis, and that when you really get an understanding, you'll see that Genesis chapter 1 is in reality... A, uh, it's it, it summarized in the book of Revelation that everything that's going to happen to you and me is found in the book of Genesis. It's going to blow you away. So don't miss it. Well, I'm just rolling through the topics today, and I, I'm going to say these things, and I'll be hitting the road. I just want you all to please take note of what you can expect. We're going to talk about days, months, times, and years, those things that should be observed, which include holidays. Again, you don't want to miss it because we're going to show you the origin, the paganism, the evil, the Bible contradictions. Listen, listen. when I say Bible contradictions, not that the word of God has a contradiction, but that those things contradict the truth of God's word and they are lies. We're going to talk about Christmas. We're going to show you Easter. We're going to show you Lent. We're going to show you those things that come along with it. We'll also be teaching you about demons, something that the church has 
totally uh, left behind and abandoned. We mentioned them, but we don't really understand how they work and who we're fighting against. Let's go to the phone lines and open up a call or two. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Good evening. How are you doing there, Pastor Scott Burrow? Wonderful. How are you? I just brought a tone out there to class on uh, Thursday. You have some great information here. Right. All right. Glad you. So you were there on Thursday. Yeah, I've been on the last two uh, Thursday. I'll be there again this coming Thursday. Well, shout out to you. We were getting ready to go somewhere real good on last Thursday. Yeah, I know it was uh, some people. We had, like, new people was in there. It wasn't it a week before. I guess you must have got on about the holiday, about the Christmas. Hopefully they show back up. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, I, you know, if I were them, I would definitely come because when we begin to talk about salvation, I think that we're now starting to ask ourselves questions. You know, Brother Tony, I won't hold you, but I'll ask you this. You know, it's strange because though I was saying things that were totally different than anything we've ever been taught in mainstream church, no one was able to refute or give scripture to say otherwise. And I think that God has to open our minds and our hearts and our eyes to even look for the truth. And that's what God does. We're not even looking for truth. We think we have the truth. And when you think you have the truth, that's when you're deceived. The Bible says he must touch us. He has to open our eyes that we will even begin to even look at truth, look for a truth. So, man, I'm going to tell you, it's an honor to have you. If you have any questions, you know how to get us, even while we're here on the air, because your question is probably helping somebody else. Yeah, also, too, I'm still trying to get down to the Word Church. I'm see if I probably have to give you my number uh, once the show is over with before I can uh, see if I can get, start coming to the Word Church. I, I, I do. You, and I, just day and stuff now, and time I would and love for you to come. We had a wonderful time on yesterday. We had to actually rent chairs. Uh, down at the Word Church. We had to go out and rent them just to, to facilitate all the people that God sent in on yesterday. And uh, as always, the Lord is there to teach us the Word. And let me say this. Um, if you, if you, do you have my personal number? Yeah, I have your personal number. Yeah. You call me and, or text me, and I'll make sure you get all the information, directions. We meet every Sunday at 12 noon. Uh, and that's 4108 West Clay Street. 4108 West Clay Street. And we meet there... Uh, and that's in Richmond, Virginia, of course. Uh, we meet there every Sunday at 12 noon. And so you let me know, and we'll guide you in. You can call me all the way up until Sunday morning to tw at to until 12 noon, and we'll make sure that if you have any trouble, the deacons will guide you in. So we thank God for you, brother. And uh, Lord willing, I'll see you Thursday. Okay, I better see you Thursday. Like I said, I'm trying to see who's leaving from this area that's going up there. That matter if I got to... You know, extra money for guys. I'm just trying to go. Okay, so that, to get up where you at for Thursday. Like two years. If you can remind me, maybe we can make an announcement Sunday. Yeah. I mean, a third. We can make an announcement Thursday, right? So that we can start carpooling and getting some folks down there. That's what I want. That's and what I've if, been trying to do for the last three years. If I can, I apologize for that. You know, if I can get a group, I'll pay for the gas. I, I just the people of God need to be able to be there. I really need to be in this area. That's right. And that's, now, that's what we're praying about right now. But. Brother Tony, I really appreciate you, and the more you're praying about it, God is going to see us through it. We're going to be able to, our needs will be met. We say thank you very much. Okay, Pastor Scarborough. God bless you, man. All right, shalom, peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all heard it. There's a brother that says he's trying to just get away to Richmond. And uh, let me tell you, the information is worth driving to Richmond. It's worth passing all 50, 100 churches that you might pass on the highway to get there. It's worth it. Truth is irreplaceable. Knowledge is your only defense. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Knowledge is the key. Knowledge is your only defense. The preachers have tricked you. They have fooled you. They have manipulated you. And there's no defense mechanism in working. There's no, there's no way to defend ourselves because knowledge is our only defense. It is our only weapon. And when you don't have knowledge, you're open for the attack of the enemy. We've been lied to out there at Smithfield. You've been lied to. And you see this brother that's calling? He's not making his way to this class because there's nothing else to do. He will tell you he's getting information he can't get on TBN. He can't get in the seven cities. He can't get here uh, at these different churches. He can't get it from these uh, T.D. Jakes because, it's listen, the word of God is preached by God. The Holy Spirit opens the mouths of his prophets and pours in. Most of these preachers have not been sent. Most of them just went. So with that being said, call me up and uh, if you're out there in Radio Land and you want to hear <coughs> more <coughs> pardon me, more about what God is doing. Again, the number is 757 357 9546. Again, 357 9546. That is the number. Uh call me up if you're listening 
And uh, we would love to hear from you. If you were able to make it to the class or you would love to come out, we'll give you more information when the show is over, before the show is over about how you can text me or reach me personally. I'll give you that in just a moment. So we're going to talk about demons. We're going to explain how they work, how they operate, and where they come from. I think that it is of mass importance that we learn that what we've been taught in the church about demons and devils are not true, especially Satan himself. We're going to show you that Satan, ladies and gentlemen, is, I repeat, Satan is God's left hand. Satan is God's creation. Sa Satan is even God's servant. You say, I've never heard of such. Satan is our enemy, so we don't want to make friends with him. He is the devil, but make no mistake about it, God uses Satan, and we're going to show you that. To aid us in our salvation. You say, I know I thought Satan was trying to stop us. But what you don't see is the full conclusion of the matter. And that is this. God uses the evil of the devil trying to stop us, which is actually what the Bible calls meat for us. Did y'all hear what I said? You ought to go ahead and shout right there. The thing that was used to stop us ends up being meat for us. And that's what God does. He takes all the evil and good. He works it together, and it all comes out to his divine, perfect plan and purpose. There is no mistakes of God. Satan was never a perfect angel, the head of the choir, that rebelled against God, and then God had to do damage control over the earth because Satan is busy. Well, call me up. 357-95-46. Again, that number is 357-95-46. Call me up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep going. So we're going to deal with demons. We're going to talk about the occult. We're going to show you the secret knowledge and worrying of the occult, how it operates in the government, uh, how it operates in the church. We're going to show you the signs, the languages, the terminologies, the agencies that the enemy uses. The Bible says Satan is the god of this world. We're going to show you how Satan has infiltrated the hospitals, the medical uh, facilities, the pharmacies. You're going to find out that pharmacy is another word for sorcery, witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to find out what the enemy did not want you to know, and you don't want to miss this. We're going to talk about, uh, well, let's go to the phone lines, and I'll come back and tell you a little bit more, uh, because this is only beginning. Let's go to the lines. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Yes, hey, how are you doing, Pastor Rob? This is Virginia Beach checking in. Wonderful. How are you? I'm, I'm doing fine, and I pray all is well. Yes. Wonderful. Everything is great, and happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. And uh, the Lord's willing, I guess, hopefully I'll see you this week. Lord be willing, I'll be there. All right. Well, it was getting uh, kind of interesting as we're digging into this salvation thing. You know, as many times as you hear it, you're able to see things that you didn't see the first time. And, and that's what I love about God and what I love about the insight and the light. That, the Bible says we gradually come to the light. And I'm just excited about it. I want to say thank you for checking in with me. And have a wonderful and blessed afternoon. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. All right. There's another caller. Give us a call at 357-9546. We're going to talk about, uh, as we were saying, the occult. All the factors of it. The toys and the different things that's going on in the music. And all of these things. The, the hidden subliminal messages. And uh, the presidency. We have a special series that we have. If you haven't picked that up at the class. On should you vote or not. We're going to show you that none of you are really voting for anything. That uh, all you're doing is putting your energy into a poll. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. That's why it's called a poll. And a poll isn't about a vote. A poll is a survey. And a certain, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, a poll is a survey. You take a poll. And so, no, you don't really elect anybody. You simply elect from whom they select, which means that nobody, none of us are responsible for putting a president in office. Uh, there are millions of people in the world, and they gave us two. Think about that for a moment. There are millions of people in the world. They gave us two choices and then told you we picked our president. You did not. We're going to show you that the plan is orchestrated and ran by the Masonic Order. We're going to show you the power of those uh, groups, not only the Masons. We're going to show you the, under, the inner workings and the alphabet gangs like the NASA and, and like uh, of the, the feds and like the CIA and like even Red Cross, who you assume are government agencies. They are not government agencies. I'm going to show you that. Did you know that? 
Did you know the Bank of America isn't owned by America? Did you, I mean, just think about that for a moment. Did you know that the Red Cross is its own gang? Did you know that Japan has roots in owning Bank of America? A gang? I believe it's called Lakusha? We need to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know that we don't have any real rights? Did you know the worst thing you could ever do is get a permit or a license of any type? Think about it. Everything in the government you have, you need a license. You need a license to get married. You need a license to drive. Well, once you get a license, you give up freedom. Nobody has ever explained that to you. A license is not a freedom to do something. A license is a permit. Because where you had freedom, you give up your freedom to take a permit. Did you know every American has a right to travel? Did you know that? You said, well, we, we, we do travel. No, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. Did you know you had a right to operate a vehicle? Did you know that without a driver's license? But when you took the driver's license, you now became under the federal organization or the corporation called America. So now they can, val they can uh, decide and validate your driving. Now they give you a license, what, permit? I haven't taught it here, but I want to just give you something to think about. They permit you, so you limit your freedom. That's because you have something called the Statue of Liberty, and that Statue of Liberty doesn't mean freedom. There's a difference between freedom and liberty. Liberty is a sailor's term. Anyone that's familiar with Navy and so on and so forth, liberty is a, ter is a sailor's term. Also, those who work in the courts know that liberty is a term of the water. And that's why when you fill out certain documents, you fill it out with a, you have to fill it out with a blue ink pen, but not just blue, navy blue. Okay? Because you're operating in something called maritime admiralty, the law of the high seas, the law of the water. And that's why the, 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 the that's why the Statue of Liberty sits on water. Because she has her own laws. And the laws of the water are not the same as the law of the land. The law of the land was really given first to those who were supposed to be free. The laws of water is the law of commerce because every one of you are nothing but products. I know I'm talking about some different things today, but this is why you need this class. If you never heard this before, you never heard of such a thing, you need to wake up. The Federal Reserve Bank and these other bankers are private entities enslaving the United States. We are in trouble, and Obama can't save you. He's not even here to save you. He's here to manage the plantation. Oh, my goodness. Is anybody listening to me today? I want you to see why we are so sought after, why we're hated, why we're blackballed, why we don't get invitations, why we get threats, why they pay money to take us off the air because of our big mouths that will not be stopped. Let's go to the number uh, on the board. It's 357-9546. Call me up. If you're listening and this is interesting to you, and you can see why this class might be important. Call me up at 757-357-9546. We're going to talk about all these terms. And this is probably the longest I've ever even dealt with it here in this area. But we have a full teaching. Pick it up when you come out to the class on the presidency. And we're going to show you all that you've been manipulated by. We're going to show you the dangers of Kung Fu, Karate, Yoga. I said the dangers of them. We're going to show you that they, that they root back from religions, other religions. We're going to show you what it is, God's true sovereignty. We're going to show you that no man can control his day of death and what death is and what it is not. We're going to show you that nobody dies and goes to heaven or goes to hell. Right away, there's no such thing as heaven or hell at death. That nobody is in heaven now, nobody is in hell. That's it. Are y'all listening out there? The number is 757 Three five seven ninety five forty six. I've said a whole lot already. I wonder how many of y'all are listening. If this is ringing a bell to you, there's so much we need to teach. We're going to talk about the rapture, how there is no rapture. We're going to talk about the second coming, what it really means. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast, how it is not a chip, how it is not a card, 
How it is not something they're going to implant into your skin, into your mind, into your memory. How it is not a tattoo they're going to put on your head and on your hand. We're going to show you what the Bible, the scriptures clearly teach it is. Let's go to the phone lines and take another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, that's right. Just checking in from Portsmouth. Listen, I hope you're able to listen to some of the things that we're going to talk about. And, hey, it's good to hear your voice today. And please consider coming out to our class on Thursdays. I've been to both so far. All right. Would you recommend that other people come? Most definitely. Hey, man, good to hear your voice. And be blessed. And prayerfully, I'll be able to see you this Thursday. Same here. All right. Good stuff. I know. All right. Shout out to my brother that just called in. The number is 357-9546. 357-9546. That is the number. And uh, if you're out there listening, please give us a call. Let's go to the phone lines. Call you on the air. Hey, God bless you, Pastor. I don't have a question for you. You were saying there was no hell, no heaven. What exactly will happen when somebody dies? What is exactly the soul? Right. Well, let me say this first of all. Welcome to the show, number one. It's great to hear your voice. Let me answer that. First of all, please listen carefully because a lot of people make this mistake. I have never said there is no heaven and that there is no hell. I don't know why sometimes that's how it comes back. I've never said that a day in my life. What I have said is, We've been taught what hell is the wrong way. We've been taught heaven is the wrong thing. The, and, and so if, in order for me not to believe in heaven, then I would have to not believe in the scriptures. In order for me not to believe in hell, I would have to not believe in the scriptures. What I yeah, will, you, know, uh, you know what, Pastor, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you know what? I have heard testimonies about people have gone to hell and have seen people there. I don't know. What, what can you comment about that? I'm going to hang up. I'm going to hang up, and I wish to explain that one. Great Thank questions you, today, by the way, and I'll just touch on that a little bit, all right? God bless you. Well, I'll go there. Mary Baxter, the young lady that wrote the book, Divine Revelation of Hell, that said she went to hell, was upstairs in hell, and downstairs in hell, and was talking, seeing preachers who were in worse places than everybody else, and all in the smell, the stench of the burning flesh, she lied. And I wish I could be a little bit, say it in a, in a little bit more nice, uh, I guess, pleasant way, but I can't. She lied. She was deceived. Am I saying she's intentionally deceiving? Maybe not. But if she's not intentionally deceiving, she has been deceived herself. You say, well, what makes you say she's a liar? Well, she's a liar because God isn't a liar. The brother asked the question, what happens to people when they die? Well, Ecclesiastes, brother, keep in mind, I'm giving you what God says, not what I say. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and if you read about 18 through 20, specifically the 20th verse, it clearly says, all when, when we die, all go into one place. You say, I never heard that. Get your Bibles open and you'll see it. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, read 18 through 20 or so, and it's good to read the whole chapter. But it says, when we die, all go into one place. Well, where is that place? It says, all is of the dust, and all shall return to the dust. That's because in death, there is no awareness. There is no praise. There is no watching us. There is no flying around like angels. There's nobody in heaven. The scripture declares that in death, no one can even give God praise. That place of death or hell is called Hades. It's the unseen unperceptible, meaning there's no perception. The other word for that is sheol, which is a Hebrew word, and that means the grave. Now, that's hell two ways in the scriptures. The other word is Gehenna. None of those words mean burning of your flesh, torturing people. All of that was given to us through paganism, has been pushed by the Catholic Church over the years to use as scare tactics to control people, religion. There is a judgment, brother, and there is a lake of fire. Come to the class, and we're going to show you what it really is. And let me tell you, I don't blow hot air. I challenge any preacher, bishop, pastor, whoever it is that says that what we're saying is not true. You believe what you believe because you've been lied to a long time. That's right. If I ask you today who was Humpty Dumpty, you was, uh, what was Humpty Dumpty, you would say he was an egg. And I often say that because that's what we think. 
Well, the story says Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty together again. Where does it say he was an egg? Do you see that? It's easy to believe a lie. And that's what we've done with the word of God. So, yes, brother, there is a hell and there is a heaven. Anyone that says there's no such thing have made God a liar. And we know that's not true. But we need to understand what those things are. That heaven is not a place you can go to as much as it is a realm. It's a realm. And it starts living in you. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Now, you want to know about the soul? Here's another lie the church teach, brother. The church teach that when you die, your soul's got to live somewhere. That is a lie. The question itself doesn't make sense and it's unscriptural. Because the book says that souls do die. You don't, your soul don't keep living when you die because when you die, your soul die because you are a soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. In the book of Genesis, God said he took dirt from the ground and he breathed the breath of life in it and man became a living soul. So no, he didn't give man a soul. Once you take breath of life, which is spirit, mix it together with flesh, now God gives it, makes it a living soul, gives it life. When it dies, it's a dead soul. You said souls can die. The book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, in about the fourth verse, says all souls are minds, and the soul that sit up shall surely die. That's Ezekiel 18 and 4 and verse 20. It clearly says souls die. If souls couldn't die, why would Jesus say, don't fear them that can destroy your, just your body. Fear him that can destroy your body and soul. If a soul couldn't be destroyed or die, why would Jesus say it? Again, the church has lied to you. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions, everything that you are. Your body isn't you. Your soul is you. That's why you can chop my arms off and my legs and my ears and pluck my eyes out, and I can still live. And I'm still me. Because that's not the real me. The real me is inside this shell. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to take us out of this mortal, give us something that's immortal. That immortality is not called eternal life. It's called deathlessness. That's the inability to ever die. That's what God is going to do when he takes all enemies, destroys his enemies. He said he will subdue all his enemies under his feet. And he said there should be a death of death. Did y'all hear what I said? Death got to die. And once death dies, there will be no, there will be no more death. Period. And so, no, we don't want eternal life because even that comes to an end. We want the, the inability to die. Brother, I hope that answered you. That's just a quick answer. This is why you need to come out Thursday night, Thursday night, to the residence in Marriott, 1590 North Military Highway. 1590 North Military Highway, residence in Marriott. Doors open at 7. We're teaching by 730. Bring somebody with you. We're going to show you how this plays out. We're going to show you the origin of Satan. We're going to show you where he comes from. We're going to show you what's going to happen to Satan. Everybody want to know, well, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire, but is that the end? It is not. The lake of fire, ladies and gentlemen, is not the absolute end. It is an end. It is a end, rather. But it's not the end. You got to know the difference between the beginning and a beginning. <laughs> a end and the end. So, with that being said, y'all out there in Radio Land, let me see, the hour is growing late. Give me a few calls, ladies and gentlemen. I come all the way from Richmond, Virginia just to talk live. Because don't you get tired of these boring, boring previous recorded broadcasts. I want to talk to you. I want to share with you. Let me give you my personal number, by the way, so that you can text me now and call me. It's 804 804- 714-4845. My personal number, you can text me now or call me. It's 804-714-4845. That, you can let me know that you're planning on being there Thursday or call me and just say, hey, I'm enjoying the show. I'm at work or, hey, uh, you know, can I talk to you later? Text me right now or, uh, uh, or call me later at this personal number, 804-714-4845. We're going to talk about this and so, 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 so many others. And I know that there are others of you who are listening even now. So, again, my personal number, 
four, eight, four, five. We're going to show you that there is no Trinity. We're going to show you that there is absolutely no Trinity. We're going to sh we're going to talk to you about the symbols of the Bible, the colors, the metals, and the th and their values, and that everything in the scriptures, every single word, has a meaning to it. Amen. We're going to show you something. This is a great teaching. I can't wait to do. It's called "Is Your Preacher a Milkman?" We're going to talk about if your preacher is a milkman. What does that mean? The church as a whole is stuck on the tip, stuck on the breast. And the Bible talks about us being weaned from the breast that we might mature to meet. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get off the bottles. It's time to get off the baby talk. We're going to walk you through what speaking in tongues really is, what it is not. What goes on on TBN, what goes on on all these great broadcasting networks is not what God calls for. It is many times fleshly manifestations. I hope y'all are listening. We're going to walk you through water baptism and communion, more milk, the doctrine of laying on of hands. We're going to show you that, uh, uh, that there is the truth about the law of circularity. Is there a law of circularity? The truth of life and death, the truth of repentance, how no man can repent except God re calls him to repent from the inside and work him out. Show you the origin of sin, the truth about worship. Show you who are those who will overcome the 144,000. Show you that Christ has a Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I love you, and I got a few minutes, but I thought I would be able to hear from some of you out there in Radio Land. If, you're, if you think this is interesting, if you're hearing anything or getting anything out of this, call me up. The number is 757-357-9546. We're going to talk about the truth of revelation, which is Jesus who is who was and will always be. We're going to explain what that means, that man must live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We're going to show you that every person's death and birth date is already decided. We're going to show you that there's nothing that can be put to it, nothing that can be taken from it. We're going to explain to you what these things mean, what God says. We're going to show you about these armor bearers and this charismatic witchcraft and these terms that I use so loosely in the church, like touch not my anointed. It doesn't mean what you think it means. Ladies and gentlemen, the hour is growing late, and maybe what we can do if you all are quiet out there, maybe you just don't feel like talking. I need to start grooming you all like I do in Richmond, and that's this. I'll put on a CD from last week, and I'm going to head down the road if don't nobody call. <laughs> because I drive all the way here just to hear and talk to you all. So I'll give you a few numbers, and then we'll move. we got another caller. All right, let's go to the line and take them before we exit. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Reverend Scarborough. God bless I, you. God bless you. I'm over on the Eastern Shore, and um, I am taking notes from what you're saying to me, and you are teaching me that what you are talking about is basically, or it has been a lie all of my life, and I'm thankful wow. for you, wow. and I shall continue to listen to you on the radio, and we also are going to try to make our way to get over there to hear you in one of your Bible classes. I would be honored to have you. And let me say this. If you are a mother, happy Mother's Day to you. Thank and, you. And, and let me tell you, Mother, I'm not exaggerating. The people who are calling can tell you they've already said it today. I know that I don't deal with a lot. You know, one guy walked up to me last week, and he said this. What you do on the radio doesn't even touch what goes on in our classes. And, I, and, and one lady called me, and she got really upset with me because she said, why don't you just teach? Because if you ever came to our class, you will see that I could never have the time that I have in person that I do on the air. So I only say enough on the air so that people see that they need to come back out. So I'm just kind of striking curiosity. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to have enough radio time all during the week. We need to be on every day down here that I can mm -hmm. play some teaching CDs during the week and then some days come in live. That way we can get a mixture. But until then, right now I'm just going through a list of topics, things that you can expect. But when you come out, I promise you, those who come to our class will tell you. They, one guy said, I learned more. I've heard this over and over and over. It has become our motto. I've learned more in one of your classes than I knew in 30 years of going to church. And so, <laughs> and, and, and that's to all glory goes, goes to, to God. But right. I want you to know I appreciate you today. And just knowing that you're taking notes, we haven't even started. I haven't even dig, dug into the word. We go through so many scriptures in the night 
proving everything. And then we give people the opportunity to we make it interactive. So please, please, please keep me up in prayer. And I want to just thank you personally for taking time to call me and let me know that I didn't waste my time driving all the way down here. Oh, you are not wasting your time, let me tell you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mother, and God bless you, and prayerfully, I'll see you soon. Oh, thank you. All right. Y'all heard it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's strange. If you think you're taking notes off of what I'm saying, you need to come out to the class, because all I'm doing is telling you what we need to go and search, what we need to study. I have yet to even begin to truly teach on the air. But I guess finding out that what I'm, I'm finding out that what I'm saying is actually teaching to most of you. We got another phone call, I believe. So let's go to the lines and take them because our time is running out. It's running quickly. The number is 357-9546. Let's go to the lines. Caller, you're on there. Pastor Stover, good afternoon. Hello there. God bless you. Yes, you as well. Um. I'm sorry I missed my class this Thursday past because my person that rise that I rise with she had to work but I was there the first Thursday that you were there. And God be willing I be there this coming Thursday. And oh. I've been telling people about you. I got people tuning in on the radio checking you out right now. Well bless you and, and shout out to all of them. Bring some more people with me. I was the lady that was sitting at the first table the first Thursday that you were there, the two ladies that left. Yes, ma'am. Bless you, mother. Well, I'm Miss Cuffy. I'm calling in again, and God bless you. And I hope that you will have some tapes that uh, you could distribute or uh, have them or uh, have to sell so that I can get people in my neighborhood to listen at the word what you're speaking. We will have some things. We had some stuff last week. And I don't know how much they took with them, but we will have some things there. And this will be a good week for you to return, Mother, because it's going well, to God really show you. I shall be there this coming Thursday. Well, bless you. And I just ask one thing. Please keep me in prayer. All right. And God bless you. Keep the good work up because I am really learning. Wow. And then what you were saying about the American Bank and all that kind of stuff you missed ago. Yes. And about the driving license. Yes. Get a license for everything. That makes a whole lot of sense because when, if you can't have a driver's license, you got to walk. Let, let, me, let me tell you something, Mother. They give you permits so they can control how you move. See, the word driver, and I'm going to explain this to you all in the class soon when we get to that topic. We're not on that topic now, but okay. I tell people this. There are terms in the courtroom that mean different from what we how we use them every day. So when you go to court, we ask for a lawyer. Well, what does a lawyer do? To you got, watch. Thank, there you go. Now watch this. Do you know why you need somebody to represent you? Now you're a grown up. Think about this for a minute. You're an adult. Why do you need somebody to represent you? Because you can't represent yourself. Well, why can't I? I'm grown. I pay my own bills. I feed myself. That's well, right. Let me tell you why you can't. Because in the courtroom, we're going to show you that every person to the government is dead. You say, what do you mean they're dead? That's why they're called corporations, because each person to the government is another corporation. You say, I never heard of that. Well, the word corporation has the word corpse in it. It's where it comes from anyway, the etymology of the word. And what that means is none of us have life in the courtroom. So when you go to court, you can't move. So you have to get an attorney to file a motion. Well, why do I have to file a motion? Because dead things don't move. Well, why do I have to be represented? Because dead things can't speak for themselves, can't stand for themselves. That's why when you go to court, they say you have no legal standing. Okay? No legal standing. Because dead things don't stand on their own. That's why you have the, these particular uh, bars that they have to pass. And people don't know this, but the law is actually owned. Somebody owns the law. You say, what do you mean? That's why everybody can't practice law because you have to have permission to practice law because the law is copyrighted. Okay. And people don't know that, so they're playing a vicious game with us. That's why when you go to court, you go to court, and it's a game. And When you play tennis, you play with a racket. When you go to court, it's just a racket. All of it's just a game. And that's what they're doing. They're playing with our lives. And I, me being a pastor, I'm not going to sit around and not let you know what's going on. So, Mother... Thank you, thank you, and I'll see you the Lord's willing Thursday. All right, God bless you. You have a safe trip home. All right, bless you. All right. Are y'all out there listening? There's a whole lot I haven't told you. I don't even know how long I'll be in 
this area coming here on Thursdays. But, I, you know, it's so much that the people don't know in the seven cities. You have no idea who you really are. You don't know that your birth certificate is a bond. Nobody told you that your birth, birth certificate is a bank bond. I usually don't even get into that down here, but your birth certificate is a bank bond. Yeah, I said it today. Your social security card is bank paper. And the numbers are routing numbers that are on the back. Because the day you were born, you have been in a deal by the government sold into or sold, or should I say, you've been given as collateral by bankers. Nobody told you this. And it's not about black and white. All of us are in this condition. We didn't have a choice in the matter. That's why when you're born, they press the mothers to give a name. Because what you didn't know is the hospitals received thousands of dollars, uh, single-digit thousands, don't, I don't want to say the wrong number, single-digit thousands whenever they can report a name. And when you're born, they don't call just anybody. Guess who they call first? Think about this. They call who? Who's the first person that's called from the hospital? Do you know? <laughs> See what I mean? I just asked somebody in the studio with me, and he had no idea. We don't, do you know? Now, well, well, let me see if I can give you a hint. They report to a certain entity. Who? No, no. They report to the entity, and the entity then you were issued a, a social security number. Why? Because once we've been checked in, then we are a product. And that social security number is your product number. Let's go to the phone lines, take this call. Yo, I got people in the studio with me in case y'all wonder who I'm talking to. Call her, you on there. Hello, Pastor. Hello. Last, last week on the radio, you had mentioned that there was more than one heaven, and that made um, the subject of reincarnation um, come to my mind. And I, so I was wanting to know if there is any such thing as reincarnation. And I'll, I'll hang up now. Thank Great you for question. My call. All right, great question. Thank you. And please, if you can, come out to the, uh, uh, to, to the class. No, reincarnation is a pagan demonic teaching. It, before it was called reincarnation, it's also looked at to be transmigration. It's called transmigration of souls. And that's why in the Bible, when the man was found blind, they walked up to Jesus. They said, who did sin? Was it his mother? Or who was it that sinned before he was even born that caused him to be this way? Because they believed, and that's why if you look at some of these old Egyptian burials and so on and so forth, tombs and all these different things, they buried with their stuff because they thought they would be able to come back and take it with them in another life. The scriptures don't teach such a thing. When you're dead, the soul dies until the day of resurrection. There shall be a day of resurrection for both the just and the unjust. Great question, ma'am. I can talk more about it, but that's a straight-up answer. Come out to the class, 1590 North Military Highway. Residents in Marriott, 7 p.m. Doors open, 7.30. We'll be already teaching. Let's go to the phone lines and take another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Uh, hello, hello, uh, Pastor Scarborough, Bob Vines calling. How you doing? All right, how are you? I'm doing fine. I can't hear you on the, uh, on the radio because I'm not in the, uh, in the area. I stopped at the house for a minute. I call let you know my mother, she, my mother, she passed away Friday night. No! Friday, night, Friday morning. Oh, no! Uh, yeah, right after I left y'all, sir, the next morning she passed away. So oh, my goodness. Y'all keep me in prayer. Yes, sir. I, I need to get in touch with you. I... I... After the program, and so we, we're going, let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you today. I lift up my brother today, and I lift up his family. And I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you would lose spirits, Father God, of joy. Father, that you would lose spirits of peace. Father, that you would lose spirits, Father God, of comfort. That the Holy Ghost would be his guide. And that through this situation, Lord, that you would work together all the things that are good. And even the things that appear evil. That it would come out to an expected outcome. That is the outcome, which is the good, which is the greatness of you. Lord, we love you today. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, to just touch his heart.
Father God, even when they're weak, even when they're torn down and don't understand, I pray, Lord, that you'll give them strength today and let them know that he's loved and that you love him like nobody else. Now, Lord, put His hand, put angels around his family members. Touch their minds and put, Father God, put your angels of protection around everyone. Father God, I come against stress and discouragement and fear and doubt and death. And I loose the spirits of God to move and operate. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, man, and I love you, and we'll be talking. I just hold on, brother. I sure will, Dr. Scott, bro. All right. God bless you, man. Tell everybody we love man. I hope to see you all Thursday. All right. God bless you, and we will do that. Shout out okay. to the whole family today. Ladies and gentlemen, that was to the uh, Vines family. I want to just give, take a moment to thank God for his family and say that our condolences and our prayers go out to them in the time of their loss. The number is 757-357-9546. Again, the number is 757-357-9546. Call me up. Let me see. We got about nine minutes left. Anybody learn anything, get anything out of this today? Um, some of you I still haven't talked to that was at the class. I would like to hear from everybody at least once if I could. Uh, some of you there Thursday I didn't even get a chance to you know talk to, but nevertheless, I want you to be blessed. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Hello? Hello, oh, caller, you're on there. I wanted to know, I believe everything you're saying is true. Can you tell me where you get your information? Well, I get my information from the scriptures. <laughs> if you're talking about the government, now that's public. The stuff I'm saying about like the, the, the presidents and all of that, that's something different. You can go and research that right in your library. As far as the Bible is concerned. All scriptures. I don't have, if, you, if you're wondering if I come out of a denomination or if no, I have no, a preacher. No denomination. It's man-made. I have but, no, no preacher. You're talking all this, and it's true, but how can we study ourselves? Is it, is it possible to do some studying ourselves? Absolutely, but the only thing I can offer to you is the, is the class and get you some of the information. Because I can't. Let me ask you this, then. Have you ever heard of Trumpet Magazine or, or, or Tomorrow's World? It sounds familiar. I don't get it, whatever it is, but it sounds, trumpet sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. but okay, I, they have a lot of the same information. And I think people's eyes are being open, you know, because right. you're tired of the same old, same old in church. And common sense tell you something wrong. Oh, every, I'm just going to tell you this, Mother. Since you're being real with me, I'm going to be honest with you. Every doctrine taught in the Christian church has flaws in it. I've not mm -hmm. seen the church teach one thing completely right. Not even one thing. You say, oh, that's a little much to say. No, I don't care if you're talking about salvation, baptism, hell, heaven, God, uh, creation. Every one of them contains flaws. That's why I go through each topic so much. And I haven't even went through them all because one lie calls for another. And so it's time to get back to the truth. I'm not very popular. And the preachers in Richmond, they hate me. And some of the ones here are starting to hate me. And they come up well, to but, the... But you know what? you walk away from what being, what's being taught and you see the light, you will be hated. Right. And that's that's how you know you're saying what Jesus said. See, there's no way T.D. Jakes can be God's preacher. And people say, well, why would you say that? Because how is it that, and Billy Graham, how is it that God, uh, when God sent Jesus to preach, he was hated and spat upon, ostracized, persecuted, and yet T.D. Jakes is preaching, Billy Graham is preaching, and America calls him their preacher and embraces him. Mm -hmm. If you're preaching what Jesus preached, you have to get the same results he got. Right. Only a few would love what we preach. Never will mm -hmm. it be the masses. Only the select few that God elects will take this mm -hmm. teaching. Mm -hmm. And I thank God because I pray that you're one of them, and I thank you for sharing with me. Well, I'll continue listening. Thank you for preaching what you're preaching. Bless you. All right, Good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate the callers today. They pulling in late, but better late than never. 357 95 46. 357 95 46. 357 95 46 is the number. Any last comments? We got five minutes. Meet me Thursday night. Bring people with you. We're going to show you how every man will be saved. Don't worry about how, you, how it's done. That's why you need to come to the class. We're going to show you what the scripture says. What it says, every knee going to bow. You said that in your church, but you don't even believe the book you carry. Come on. 357-9546. Again, call me up. We got about five minutes. Any last callers, call me up. 
357-9546. Again, 357-9546. Give me a ring. Let me hear from you all out there in Radio Land as I'm getting ready to get out of here. But to those who are here, please, we want to hear from you. If you're getting anything out of this, meet me Thursday night, 1590 North Military Highway, the Residence Inn, Marriott. By the way, you can call me or text me right now after this program personally. My personal number is 804-714-4845. Again, my personal number is 804-714-4845. So text me or call me. I see if I already got a few texts already. Let me know that you are listening. Again, 804-714-4845. The engineer says I have two minutes left. Please, uh, each and every one of you out there in Radio Land, we love you. Prayerfully, you'll hear from us, uh, and we take it day by day. Those of you who are helping us to do this, paying for the broadcast, shout out to Brother Barlow, I believe. Help us out. We would like to come back Wednesday if possible. If not, play a tape. Definitely we'll be back on Thursday and Friday. Help us out. If you want to know how you can help us, call me and I'll give you that information if it's been a blessing to you. Until next time. Well, this is your favorite pastor's favorite pastor. Thursday night, 7 p.m. There's another text. I got it. Uh, uh, 7 o'clock, doors open, 1590 North Military Highway, residence in Marriott. Call me at 804-714-4845. See y'all Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Tune in. Don't miss it. Be blessed.